Så. Jeg var ude i snorken en øh, sommerdag, og øh, Give it a swing with Smith. And today, I'm indoors. I've been out in the inventing shed, and it's just blowing a gale. It's really crappy, windy weather. And the truth is, I'd planned a fishing video today. I was going to go fishing, but the wind was just ah, all right. Excuses, excuses. It sounds like, but no, it was just absolutely no fun. So I've been a bit productive in the rod room, which is actually our spare bedroom, and I use this for, well, when my son comes up and stays, he, he stays in the bed here and everything. But so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the fishing rods I've collected over the last 42 years. Um, not many of the old ones left, but I do have a collection of antique rods, but that's another issue. Let's just get down to business. So let's just have a little panoramic view round the rod room. There we go. Right then. As you can see, I've got an array of rods there, and they're the rods I mainly use. Why so many fishing rods? I don't know. But they're also things I've collected over the years, and of course, so what I'll do is I'll just have a, an extension on here. There we go. So, there we are. So there are the rods across there. There's the computer. There's a whole city football flag in the corner because that's the that's the team that me and William follow and that's the town I was born in. I grew up in Hornsey, but I was born in Hull. Hully gully, codhead. Never mind, that's the way it is. And I would just like to share this with you. This is a painting that a friend of mine did. He's an artist. It's Captain Colin. You've seen him on some other vlogs. And he painted that a few years ago now. And although it says it's not us, it really, it really is us. And if you look at the sky, you can just see some, yeah, the clouds are sort of shaped like fish. It's, it's a nice bit of, it's ni a nice painting. I love it. And there's a, there's a, an old sea painting there. And then, now that fishing, now let's start there with this fishing rod. Yeah, now that's an old split cane. And that fishing rod was built during the war, I know that because I, I bought it second hand and uh, the, the guy who had it had it all his life and uh, the handle, the cork handle was totally black with the grease from his hands and, and, and of course we have to remember in the old days when you had a fishing rod, you had it years, you, you didn't just go buy new ones all the time even, even pretty well to do people didn't just buy new rods all the time they got a rod they liked, a favourite rod and they used it, it became part of them um, today in our consumer society, and we're all guilty, I'm, I'm not on the moral high ground they said oh it's all wrong we're all guilty of it getting new stuff because it's much more available in fact from the 70s things have got much cheaper and more available um you know a new fishing rod a new beach caster was a big event when we got to the 90s people didn't buy a new beach caster a surf casting rod if over there in america You'd buy a pair, so they were, you had a matching pair and matching reels, so you had them on the tripods on the beach, all matching, all very nice. But anyway, it's that's that's how that's how the world's gone, that's how society's gone, and and we just have to go with it. Um, but I've reached a point where I will buy no more fishing rods, and you may laugh at that and say, "Oh yeah, 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 you just wait, mate, the new one." But but no, seriously, I've reached that point. I know I've reached that point because I've got some. And I've got more than enough. They'll, out, <laughs> they'll outlive me, these fishing rods, I can tell you. But anyway, let's get back down to what we were talking about. We'll go down to the rod rack. There we go. Now, then, as you can see here, this is a, a rack that's filled with lots of different fishing rods. And everything from, well, let's have a say, we've got some, let's have a look. We've got these little six foot fishing rods with a little bait casting reel that's for spinning um, you can use it for a lot of applications you can use it off a boat because it's a nice short little rod not for heavy boat fishing not for heavy boat fishing but it, it's it's a nice little rod for you know a little ounce lead and a worm if you're just in a nice sheltered harbour and you don't need much lead to get to the bottom great little fishing rod um, 
again where I live I live in northern Denmark on the on the eastern side so there's not a lot of current it's not like the North Sea we, I mean there is obviously but but we, we generally have it, it's 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 like you can use get away with lighter gear where I fish anyway you know because I don't go that far out and then um, of course it's a nice little lake rod as well but yeah so we've got we've got this all these rods here we've got everything from ah here's a bit of angling history for you let's have a look at this now for for, for those who can remember <laughs> there we are a Barry Rickards carbon piker I bought that in 1985 it's 11 foot and it's a pike fishing rod mainly for dead baiting but but I live bait as well I don't have that moral conviction oh it's cruel to use a live bait nature is cruel it, it's hideously cruel and i'm not going to be guilty about a lip hook roached under a under a float catching pike no freaking way but yeah, that's just my take on it so that that's that but yeah a barry ricard's carbon piker yeah so that's a bit of angling history. Again, it's um, it's actually on the, the the carbon fiber rods when they when they all got the rage, you know. We went from the split cane to the glass fiber, and then um, and then of course came carbon. F oh, and there's all kinds of materials now, all kinds of materials. Further down on some of these rods, I've got the got the reels. Um, I've got the DAM. I've got pens. I've got Shimano's. I've got ABUs, Abus. Uh, Again, some smaller. Oh, these are these, This is a uh, Ry not Ryobi. That's that's a real old make. What the hell do they call this one? I've read Akuma. That's the ones. Akuma. Akuma make really good reels. Um, I've had I've had I've had an old Akuma that I bought nearly twenty years ago, and it's had again like my Opinel knife. If you remember that, it's had so much crap and blather on it, but it's it's holding out. It's good. Um, I've got some little boat rods that I use. For flatfish off the boat. Now, there we are, and I've got a little, a little ambassador five thousand on there, a little multiplier. Got braid on it. The, own, the braid's a funny thing with me. I I only use braid when I'm sort of direct fishing straight down from a boat. I I find it annoys me when you cast with it. It annoys me when you reel it. And he goes whirr whirr whirr. Um, purely preference. But yeah, I do like braid in some applications, but not all. So. I've got that. That's a little. It's it's, it's only four and a half feet. That rod. Um, so we've got that. Let's have a look. So there's the little. Uh, and then I've got now. This is a bit of a novelty rod, really. I bought this in California. No, nope, sorry, Arizona. And I'm not name dropping there to try and brag about how I've travelled in the world. I've travelled a bit, but not extensively. But yeah, I found myself down in Arizona and near the near the uh, hotel. Um, was a great big Walmart and at that time we'd had quite a few ice winters here in Denmark and you could fish through the ice and I was in Walmart and they had these little they call them a dock demon look, look at that little rod and it's just for fishing off you know the side of what we would call a jetty like a wooden jetty in, in the US they call them docks and um, but it, I thought that would be absolutely perfect for, for ice fishing so I bought it, among other things, and I brought it back to back to Denmark, where I live, and then um, we've had so many mild winters, we, there's no way we could have got out on the ice. But anyway, I've got it anyway, just ready. So that's a little novelty rod, good little rod. Never caught anything on it because I've never used it, but one day, one day I will, yeah. Um, any other, yeah, uh, here's a, a nice little original idea I did like. Um, Mitchell, Mitchell produced a rod called the copper stick now this is this rod here is the cop, uh, Mitchell copper stick and it is it is glass uh, it is carbon and um, but what I liked about it it had like a wooden look about it it had the old it could be like a length of green heart or something so that that appealed to me and that rod is a nine foot rod cast up to 30 grams and I have had fish I've had a pike 12 pound pike on it and at the same time, I've had eight ounce perch on it. A real nice all rounder, but again, nine foot's quite long. And and the uh, lately, I've, I've I've got more into. I like the what I've what I like about the American style of fishing is it's they use very short rods, very effectively. And I like that. Sh I like short rods, and it's a far cry from growing up in England when we went coarse fishing, and we would use these twelve foot float rods. 
a 13 foot float launch, which of course is small compared to the poles, but that's a different issue. And you've got these grip, relative to what I use now, they're like telegraph poles. So I, I, over the years, I've got more and more, shall we say, American style with these uh, seven footers. Um, I've got a, a nice little seven footer. And in fact, even, even my piking rod, and this is, a, this is my plug rod. Now then, now this is a Shimano. It's actually, it's, it's, it's a seven foot Shimano and it's for bass fishing. And it's a beast. I would happily play a 30 pound pike on this rod. Not that it's as stiff as a stiff as a telegraph pole. It's got a lot of action, but it's strong in the butt especially. And I've I've matched that with a pen. Now, if you want a robust reel, a pen is the beast. This is a, a pen, uh, what, what, they, what they call this make? It's the slammer. Love that word, slammer. And it, but it is a slammer. You know, I'm not gonna wear that thing out. I'll tell you what, I'll be dead and buried long before that's worn out. And I'm only 52, so it's got a few years yet. But yeah, I, I, I love that. That's, that's a lovely action rod. Again, it, you've got the back of strength, but you have that feeling that you've got a nice delicate piece of, you've got a piece of tackle that's, like I say, that's sporting. You feel as though you're sports fishing. Um, another rod, another of my favourite rods, is, come on, it's hard to see. It's like, a, it's like an Aladdin's cave. Is this rod. Now, this is a Savage Gear. Now, Savage Gear make lovely, lovely, it's mainly for piking and things like that. Sort of a specimen hunting. No, not specimen, uh, predator fishing. However, this little rod is only up to seven grams. It's really light. And it has this, it has this beautiful light action. And I call it my trout rod. If I'm brown trout fishing, you know, for small wild browns, you know, nothing bigger than eight ounces. Eight ounces, you know, so half a kilo max. I'm going over from kilos to ounces, so never mind. That's that comes with the territory. You know what I'm talking about. And uh it's got a lovely fine tip. Now I you saw that, the white tips. I, I like to have white tips on my rods with a little red dot at the end because occasionally if conditions are, are really bad, if conditions are bad and, and the, if you've got like a, a wind against you from, if you're if I'm fishing in the Fiora or Big Lake and the wind's against me and my float just keeps dragging in and it's, it's just too much bother, I'll put a small lead weight on, fish on the bottom and I like to watch the rod tip. So it's a bit like a quiver tip. Now, all you Brits out there watching this will know what a quiver tip is. Not sure about over in the US if quiver tips are big, but what it is, it's like a real thin extension to your fishing rod, which is purely a bite indicator, really sensitive. And so you've got the, the, the stiffer action of the actual rod that does the casting, but you have this really fine quiver tip. Lovely idea, using for grailing and all sorts um, in, in my younger days. Yeah, so I've, I've caught some nice fish. Um, so I'm just thinking about what else I can show you from this, this these, like I said, these are the rods I use. What I'll do is I'll do a quick, um, I'll do a quick, this here, I'll just go back a little bit. Uh, this here is a nine foot Ron Thompson. Ron Thompson, casts up to 60 grams, and this is my pier rod. If I'm fishing off piers, you don't need to cast, cast far out off the piers in Denmark. If you're casting too far out, you're casting where there are no fish. You want to be casting quite close to the end of the, the stone wall where all the fish are hanging out. So you don't need long rods. I use these 9 foot, 60 grams, and they're fine. So we start from the heavier duty rods here. The heavier duty rods here. And then we work through to the lighter rods. And then it goes a little bit back on itself, and I've got a bit of a the old Barry, the the Barry Ricard's carbon pike, which is quite a heavy rod. And um, yeah, those are the rods I use mainly. So I've been through the reels a bit, been through the rods a bit. But then there's some other another form of fishing that I've done a lot of in my young, before I came to Denmark was beach fishing and um, fishing from the beach, surf casting, if you want to call it that. And and that was off the east coast of Yorkshire. And the, the, the standard kit back then was just a 12 foot beach caster, big reel, and a 21 pound main line. We did, the shock leaders came in a bit later, 
again shock leaders for those of you who don't know is where you have your main line which is quite fine like 15 pound but then to take the shock of the cast when you've got a four ounce lead on or even bigger you know eight ounce lead six ounce lead then the thick line with a nice little nifty knot was connected to your main line and then so the thick line a rod length and a half at least would take the shock of the cast but then the fine line would enable you to cast a long way out it was quite pioneering at its time and of course it's just standard practice off the beaches around britain now um where i fish i don't really do it because i, I don't go for long distance casting in fact i do very little beach fishing anymore um and the beaches i fish are so shallow and so so calm i can use really light tackle but uh, just just out of interest i think i'll show you this one there we go. This is a big. This is a beast. This is a 16 foot pen, multi tip, and this casts up to seven ounces on the thick tip, up to five ounces on the fine tip, and the two tips are designed for if you're fishing for up to daddy, If you're fishing for cod in some quite hard weather in big seas, you want to be casting a real heavy lead. So this is a much stiffer rod. Uh, much stiffer tip so you can choose between the two tips you've got that one there and then you've got then you've got this one here which has more eyes on it and it's a much finer tip so if you're fishing in calm conditions for small fish like dabs you know small, small whiting and stuff there's not a lot of big and, and well more the conditions than the species actually i think then you can go you can go knock down fish a little four ounce lead or a three ounce lead and fish with this nice fine tip and see the bite's really nice so again back to the back to the quiver tip theory but it's a it's a nice look it's a lovely rod i got it off again captain colin i um i fitted a kitchen for him and uh in payment which i didn't ask for but he said oh, he said you can have this rod because i know you've had your eye on it so yeah i'm yet to use it but one day i will get down to the beach and then give it a swing <laughs> yeah give it a swing why not another rod which again is of the beach casting surf fishing is this one it's a shakespeare red metal and that's a 14 foot rod four but well, three pieces when you when you connect it and again it's got let's have a look can you see one 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 tip's got an extra eye on it and compared to the other one and that's that's the fine tip so that's for fishing lighter and this thick tip is for casting heavier legend in heavier weather that's a 14 footer Again, 14 foot's adequate. In, like I said, back in the 70s we and the 80s, 12 foot was the standard beach casting equipment. Um, but it's gone on from there. 12 foot, 13 foot sometimes people had. But anyway, but yeah. Another thing, what I remember, again, a bit of nostalgia is playing in here because the, during the 70s, there were, fishing rods had different colours. When Conaflex, and all of you anglers in, Brit in Britain will see fishermen, you'll know Conaflex, Cod 5s and Cod 6s. When the Conaflex, shall we call it an epoch, came in, then all rods became black. But in the 70s, we had ABU, Abu, making uh, the Atlantics in blue, in brown, uh, in red. There, there were different colours. And um, I suddenly... Well, only only 10 years ago, I, was, I, suddenly, I suddenly missed that. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint my rods. And what I did was, again, back to the beach casting theme. This is a, this is a, a Fladden rock hopper. 10 foot long, up to four ounces. You could use it off the beach if, the, if, the, if there wasn't too much surf, you know. In fact, yeah, you could always use it off the beach. And I thought, you know what, I want this. And it, and it was a really drab black blank with brown whippings on the eyes. And I thought bloody hell no i'm gonna do something so what i did was i got a spray some car spray paint and i i, I protected the eyes with the uh, tape and then i just sprayed it blue anyway and and I, and I don't regret it because the rod still acts really well i again i use this for pier fishing if if i'm on a bigger pier horses for courses one of my favorite expressions so that was the blue one and i also did this one i did this one green because again, back in the seventies, you you came across green rods, and it was purely purely nostalgia. It's got nothing to do with the sight catching fish. It's just aesthetics, isn't it? Nice to look at. So yeah, that was a bit of fun. So they're two foot, two ten foot rock hoppers by Fladden. Nice rods. I've caught a lot of fish on them actually. But then we get to 
a rod that I've really caught a lot of fish on, and it was one of my favourite rods. Um, I bought this quite a long time. That this was from oh, 94, so 25 years ago, and this is a Paul Kerry. Now Paul Kerry was a champion caster. Um, again, one of the pioneers of the the long distance casting and everything, and but and he brought he worked for Die Hour and um, they 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 came out with their own sea fishing team worldwide and everything and um, a, a selection of rods and I bought this it's a, it's what what's known as a bass rod, so it's a bit, little bit lighter. You can cast up to four ounces. It's eleven foot six. It's got lovely tip action. Lovely tip action. But the funny thing is, I've used this off the beach off Hornsey, where it was, and and where it can get real rough with the northeasterly, and it held its own with the bigger beach casters. I could still cast if I cast into the wind, and and held the line directly into the wave action. It, I, I fished with, and I and I really enjoyed using it. Um, I used to team it with a a, a five thousand five hundred ABU multiplier. Lovely rod to use. Now. The other thing, as regards rods, I have a collection of split cane. And this, I all keep in this old, now then, in the old days, when people had wicker baskets, and course fishing would go with a big square wicker basket over the shoulder and all the nets, and then have all the fishing rods and fishing rod stands in here, in a, in a, in a bag like this. It's not leather, it's imitation leather, and it's from the 50s when everything became plastic in imitation because it was the new material and it was cheaper. And um, of course, after the war, things were in pretty short supply, so they'd use any material they could. So although it's not something, it's still, it's still angling history, although it's like a bit plastic and a bit rubbery, but it's, it's still angling history. And in here, I've got the selection of rods. Let's have a look. Now then, this was, I think, what I'm going to have to do, actually. Now, I'm going to backpedal a bit on this because I'm not really set up to get these rods out and I don't want to pull the eyes out, out or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate vlog with the split canes because I've got, I think I've got eight. And I've shown you one that was up on the wall. And um, th that that's that's... A real nice one. I don't use it anymore. But um yeah, I'll make a separate vlog of the split canes because that's that's that that's that's a story in itself. Anybody who's into angling history will really like that. Ah, it's getting warm here. So I think I'll make a separate vlog on that one. Um what I would like to show you now, which is nothing to do with fishing, if anybody remembers my uh my air rifle <laughs> hello. There we go. I got it all sanded down, all painted up. But instead of doing, I had some romantic ideas about making this butt all like like a, a BSA Mercury again. See my my vlog air rifle, air rifle restoration um, project. Uh, I had this idea that I would. Uh, sand it all down and make it all like a mercury and stain the wood and everything and what happened was when I started sanding I could see that the stock was very 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 pitted and and I just thought how much time am I going to put into this project so then I had another idea that I would black or blue the barrel and, and chamber and do the the stock again in a camouflage because you can spray camouflage not from one tin because you can't get camouflage in one tin. You know, different tins of, of browns and greens and blacks, and then you, you use uh, like patterns. You can actually spraying camouflage is, is quite easy to do. But again, then I'd have to pay for four different tins. Uh, there's you know forty quid. They're, they're not cheap those. So I went. I, I sort of. I sort of went back to let's compromise here. And then I thought, well, let's go with a tactical look. The black look because a lot of our rifles today are made out of plastic and things so i got some uh Carsberry paint and printed it black um needs a trigger guard and it needs some sights so it's not quite ready for action yet the spring pistons in it's all it's functioning it fires and it's going to be interesting to see how accurate it is because it, it, you can feel it's got a lot more yeah and of course it'll need to bed in but that's another i just thought i'd give a quick as i suddenly saw it sat in the corner there so there we are 
Um, other than that, there's the tackle corner. And as you can see down there, I've got different bags of different tackle. So what I'll do is I'll just put this one, this bag of split canes back. Again, I'll save that for another vlog because that's that'll be quite interesting, I think you'll find. I love it. And what I'll do here, I'll get my uh, an old Shakespeare Odyssey bank bag. Yeah, there we go. And uh, back there you go my mate down you go and uh, I think I'll grab there we are right then it's Sunday afternoon and before we make Sunday dinner which we have I'm gonna crack up a beer cheers this is a really good Danish beer called Tubo. I'm going to say Skål, which is Danish for cheers. It never gets old. Lovely. Mm. Anywho, let's have a look at this bag. Now, as I've said before, in my younger days, I did a lot of pike fishing. But the most of my pike fishing was either live baiting or dead baiting. And occasionally, funny enough, my first pike was caught on a plug. A plug that was salvaged out of a big reed bed when my mackerel landed wrong and I dragged it out with a big lump of weed and in this lump of weed was a, was a, a homemade plug and I caught my first pike on that. So I've got this bag here. There we are. And in this... Look at that. Look at that for a bag of goodies. There we, are. there we go. Now in here I've got a bag of all sorts of things. I've got these uh, jointed plugs. The more I've, I've actually put them in order of colour, not in order of size or, or make. The reason being that colour, I think, is the most important thing. Um, in the sea, apparently, for people who've done a lot more, I haven't done much leo fishing in the sea, other than than, than uh, wobblers, yeah, what do you call them, um, spoons, you know, abu tobas and things like that. But if you're using plugs, apparently in the sea, the, the, the blue colours work a lot better. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more this year of the, of the plug fishing in the sea. But I've got, this is this is a good one that I've actually had quite a few pike on that as well. It's a bit, I don't think the camera will pick it up, but yeah, it's got a few teeth marks in. But all of these plugs in here, I've got, I've bent the barbs down. So they're not barbless. However, the barbs are bent down because sometimes if you catch a pike or any fish and the big barb goes in a big, a big gristly piece it's it can be really difficult to get out and i don't want that really when i've got a great big pike in the boat and and it's bad for the fish as well so all all the all the hooks are turned down and um, this is a classic bass fishing now i'm picking it up in the volcan with it but never mind that's a classic bass fishing leo but again it works for anything it looks like a, a big um oh what, what would you call it there to beach to beach is a, is a sand eel sand eel Sorry, I, I sometimes when I'm doing these vlogs, I, I because I I live in Denmark and I, and I speak Danish all the time, so occasionally I, I get lost. And then, what's the word for this in English? But anyway, I've got that. Um, and then we've got these. We've, I've got so there's a ver various like standard plugs down there. And then I, I'm not quite happy with that camera angle. Let's have a see if that, that works better. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And then I've got these uh, brighter. I'm really rapidly going off brake plugs because of all the plugs in my tackle box. These are the ones with the least te teeth marks in and that's sort of telling me something. I'm really going off these. But don't despair because you can just get some spray paint, spray them over and make them a different colour. Drab. Drab seems to work. Drab seems... Again, I've got this Ab Abu ABU Hilo. Look at that. Not a teeth mark on it. 
like the one underneath, not a tooth, no, like the one underneath, not a tooth mark on it, bright orange. I'm not a fan anymore. Well, anymore is actually the wrong thing. I don't think I've ever been a fan. Um, and then we go to the, then in this corner, I've got these, these strange little fat, big S type lures. In the, in the US, I know they call them crankbaits. Um, here in England, here in England, here in Europe, we, we know, they're known as plugs. Um, not butt plugs. <laughs> you want to lump your ass. Anyway, and then I've got something here which is a bit of angling history, really. And that's called a Devon minnow. And that's um, something from the past, really. I'm sure it's going to work. I've, I've got plans for it this summer. I'll be doing some trolling on, on the boat, past some big stone reefs that are out in the sea, see if we can get some mackerel or whatever, whatever. Fish are predators and, and they'll go for things. Um, so that's my, uh, that, that, that's a little view of my plugs. I like them. And the fish like some of them. Again, it's that, it's that, it's that thing with fishing. You, you just don't know this. I have also a box of small plugs, and these are used for perch and uh, trout, and sea trout. Sea trout will also take them. So they're much smaller, there's some deep divers, uh, things like that. Some really small little brown trout, uh, um, which are quite cute. <laughs> they catch fish, I know they're the same. Yeah, I've been out there using them. Let's uh, else. Uh, another thing I've been really, really interested to, since since starting to follow YouTube, uh, a lot of American anglers use jigs, and um, as a result of that, I've I've gone and collected uh, a big box of jigs, all kinds of sizes and styles. Uh, Berkeley makes some really nice ones, um, and there's also some with just a lead head, you know. So uh, I've had I've had some success, especially with perch fishing on the smaller ones, and I've had a couple of pike on some of the bigger ones. I need to use them more. That that that's that's what this is all about. It's not about buying new tackle. It's about getting time to get out there on the water. So that's my, that's my lure box. Oh, what? Just a sec. I've got something here. Very interesting new concept for me. Again, Texas rigging. Again, you guys in the US, you you know all about Texas rigging. You're really good at it. And uh, and of course, with those wide mouth bass, you know you need a big hook. Uh, so I'm going to be trying some Texas rigging for cod. Uh, in the sea with a, a big heavy egg lead and get it right down among the weed freezer of course down among the rocks and the reefs and see if i can pluck out some cod with it because those those uh, rubber bodies will really work well i'm sure of it again this is theoretic at, at the moment i've been building this up over the winter um ah spinners yeah yeah spinners we love spinners there we go some classics in there, a couple of spoons in there as well, but it's really a spinner box. Come here, and let's have a look at some of these spinners. Now well, we've got some of these big pike spinners. Oh shit, there we go, come here. This is a big meps, and uh, this is actually used here in Denmark a lot for salmon. Big sea trout will take it as well, but they have to be big, you know, you're talking five kilos, you know, 10 pounders will take it. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, big salmon spinner. Pike, of course, no problem. We have an Abu ABU Reflex, another classic. It's quite a big size, so it's a bit too big for perch, but that will take pike, and it will also take salmon. And um, staying on the MEPS theme, as, or back to the MEPS, MEPS theme, MEPS number three. This is a real all-rounder. You can catch most fish on this. From brown trout to big pike to even salmon, you can catch them. I've never done the salmon thing on one of these, but um, but I've done the other stuff. And then some another some of these smaller meps. This is this is a meps number two. Again, met little meps number two. Beautiful little lure, really works nice. Spins lovely. I and mean, one of those light rods I showed you earlier on, and just sort of eight pound line straight through. Have some real fun with nice perch fishing and nice nice trout fishing. Uh, a couple of these rooster tails. Now they this is like an American again American concept. Rooster. That's an American thing, isn't it? Rooster. Um, 
I've actually caught quite a few perch on this. Come on. Well, all right, then I can't get it untangled. <laughs> now, my, now my camera's going to... The rooster tail's one there, and, and the idea is that the, the, the hook is covered with this slight rooster hair. Quite a heavy body, so you can get that you can get that quite far down. So if you want, if you're fishing deeper water and you want to get your lure down, just use one of them. Really good. And ah, here's an interesting thing. It's not a spinner, but it's in my spinner box with a couple more spoons in case I just throw that box in my bag. That's another ABU Abu spoon, and it's got a couple of weed guards on it. Those weed guards protect the the treble hook, and that is very old i've had that must be nearly 30 years now must be because it's been with me everywhere and it's caught a lot of fish really good and i can't remember the make of what it well i remember it's an abu but i can't remember what they call it really effective look at that beautiful beautiful yeah i've caught some fish on that one yeah so that's pretty much the lure box oh i've got some I've got some got some equipment for trolling uh, dead fish where you put them on spinning flights and these are spinning flights quite old-fashioned by today's standards um, but they do work and I know that for a fact uh, I shall now show you something which is that's actually in the old days they used these for salmon and you mounted a big prawn on these so you have the sp central spike into the prawn then the two treble hooks mounted in the side then you'd whip it on and you would drag that through the water and the prawn would get a spinning effect which would really give really aggravate the the salmon but you can use them for pike as well with a roach on you know it doesn't have to be a shrimp but... so they're, they're all spinning flights you can't really get over of them these days um, again it's, it's a bit old-fashioned what you can get in these days instead is are these uh, heads so the idea is that you put your you take the small red pin out, put the fish in, and re replace the pin to lock it in. And then the 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 the, the, the clear head has a, a vein on it, so as you bring it through the water, it wobbles like that. But you have a, a, a roach body or a bleak body, or whatever, or yeah, a herring body. So yeah, um, so that's the trolling box or spinning flight box. I think I've been through it all in here now. Oh, no. There's something else. It's back to Walmart. It's back to Walmart when I was there. These are crazy. Look at that. And I've never caught a fish on them because I've never used them. <laughs> Again, I'm building things up. Now, what do they call these? They call them... They're the, the craziest looking thing. And they're not a new thing. They've been on the go for years and over in the US. Look at that thing. Now, would you ever imagine catching a fish on something like that? But apparently they do, and I've seen it on, on YouTube, that they're real effective. Um, and again, this this rubber skirt undulates through the water, and this spinning blade spins over the top, and it goes, bam. There we go. You can get these with a trailing hook as well. If the fish are biting short... There's a trailer hook you can attach with a small treble. But again, I'm looking forward to using these as well. Um, when the weather gets a little bit better, not much better, just a bit better, I shall be out doing all this, I can promise you, and making some action films instead of just uh, theoretical films, you know, talking about things. Um, let's have a thing. One last thing here is these strange... Let's have a look. Spinning rigs. That's a length of line with a spinner on, but then a normal hook, and you put put a piece of worm on, and so basically you're spinning, but then there's a piece of worm on the end, so it'll grab the worm. Effective for perch. Used. I have used those, and they really work. So there's there's some old stuff in there that I've used with success, and there's some new stuff that I'm very hopeful of. Right. Oh, look, and this tackle box, or this tackle bag, is made by Berkeley, and I'm I'm not getting sponsored. <laughs> Trust me, they have no interest in sponsoring someone like me with my small YouTube channel. But it's it's a really good bag, and you've even got a place in the top here 
for your pack lunch. A freezer, a freezer block in there, and, and a pack lunch. You've got, you're good to go all day. Right. Um. I think I'm about exhausted. Well, no, I've got, I've got this bag here, which I think might be of interest to. Now this is my. Oh, I'm such a shit cameraman. I'm sorry. But anyway, let's have a look. This is my bank bag. Odyssey. And it was made by Shakespeare. Bought it years ago. And here I've got disgorges. I've got some uh, some leader line. Uh, it, it's uh, fluorocarbon. And I've got some bubble floats. Standard floats. I've got all my packs of hooks. Everything from size 16 to to size ones, small a little bag of small trebles, little bag of small trebles, um, bombarda floats. I've even got small rod stands, little sand spikes you can stick in the in the bank, and then have your rod stub if you do some ledgering, which I've talked about. And I've got something here that I really like to use. And it's uh, Gulp Alive Spray. Now even if I'm using worms or lugworms, I like to give a spray of this because I smoke a pipe and I think that, that the pipe smell, the tobacco smell can actually, ah, it can. I, th I think the fish can pick it up. So I'm not saying this attracts more fish to me. However, I do think it masks the smell of my fingers. And I use it all, all the time. Berkeley Gulp Alive. It's quite expensive, but if you're buying um, gulp alive anyway you've got all that juice to put in so you i think it's an investment i like it so that's this is what i call my standard bank bag bank bag so if i don't want a lot of gear with me i just take this and there I've, I've got a little box and i've got lead weights in there i've got fishing hooks in there and um different stuff fishing hooks lead weights uh some some little beads some really small jigs yeah and some really small spinners just in case I decide to flick a spinner out for a trout, yeah. And of course there's room for a thermo flask in there as well, so that's my bank bag. So, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. I hope you've had a, I hope it wasn't too sort of disjointed this uh, talk, but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to post something. I, I haven't uploaded anything for ages, and I thought, well, it's a bit of a crappy afternoon outside, so I'll, I'll bring you into my inner sanctum, the fishing rod room and tackle room. So, I'll leave you with a view of the painting, angling. There is no better thing for the soul than fishing. It keeps you sane in this mad world, I'll tell you. So, give it a swing, you're signing off. And I'll talk to you all later. Another vlog on the split canes another time. But I'm hoping to do an actual fishing video. To show that I'm not just sitting at home playing with my fishing rods all the time. <laughs> Alright then you guys, I'll talk to you all later. Toodle pip. God, I can't even turn the fucking thing off.